Hey guys, I'm back for this this for part two. So I've been letting it dry. I'm actually I forgot about it. I, I should have gotten back to it earlier, but here we are. So now that's dried out, I am now. No, let's see where we're at. Yeah, now that it's all dried out, what I want to do next is I want to make the subject pop. And to do that, I'm going to uh, darken the background out a bit more. Let's just get a bit of that pink, purpley paint. And a good way for you, or at least I found, to make the subject pop is to drop parts of the background so for example this bit I'd like it to get really dark so I just do the outline so I'm basically outlining my uh, jellyfish by darkening my background because in real life, there are no hard lines in your subjects. There's only uh, dark shadows. So when you actually look closer at cartoons, it's easy to spot uh, a drawing. It's cartoony because of the dark black outline. Those dark outlines don't exist in the real world. So what we're doing is like we're just deepening the shadows. And that will make about the outline for the um, jellyfish pop. So just paint through. So while I'm just filling it out, I'm basically just basically just filling out this area. I'm also leaving out some little uh, round spots for bubbles. Just randomly place them there, here and there, and like keep keep them white, keep them light the whole way. Don't get pigment in them. So that'll give the illusion of like bubbles floating in the background. So the thing is like, if you try to do this in acrylic, what you would do is you just paint the background dark, and when it's dry, put a white paint on top to like simulate the bubbles. But in watercolor, you can't actually do that. So the way to keep the bubbles white or brighter than the background at the very least is to keep in mind that you just have to not paint into those areas if that if I'm making sense just like keep them keep them in mind while you go through your painting little bubbles things little bubble things cool so I'm just gonna darken the rest of it down This is actually a good way, a good chance to do some of the tentacle details for like the outer ones, the ones like floating out away from the body. Because you definitely don't want to paint those in. go through bits of the background and instead of just going through the whole thing I'm thinking of just breaking it up um, like instead of painting all the way through I can do a little detail here like that now that that area is blocked out I can just color it in It'll have the illusion of uh, being uh, darker than the rest of the background. Keep my little bubbles in there. In the shape of the bell. Cool. 
yeah maybe put a little bit more pigment in the edges just to soften it right nice mm. and keep going through the whole background filling in details where you think it will help the define the your subject so I also like for example here I want to add a bit of definition here so what I do is I just block out here that's the bell shape and then maybe it tapers off somewhere just blends up into the rest of the background Sorry, just had to turn down the music. Cool. Just going, keep going through the whole background. Just identify, identifying little bits that you can fill in to make the subject pop. So I think here, because the tentac the tentacle would be really different lighting from the back background so this is the chance to define those tentacles so, And the fish we should define the shape of the fish too. Little fish tail. And just keep filling in the space. Parts that would help my subjects pop. Yeah. Maybe add a little pigment here just to define the tentacles. Dark colors here. If you notice, I change up brushes. Um, it's easier for me to change things that I see on the spot rather than just finish like a whole section and go back through it. I think it helps a lot in watercolor because if you let the part dry, by the time you go back to it, you won't be able to do some things you can do while it's actually wet although although of course like it depends on what you're trying to do there's some techniques that you have to wait for the paint to dry before you can start applying like major details minor details sorry so I'm gonna use my, use my uh, straight long brush to just find uh, this bits that I can define like more tentacle bits here there you go this bit requires a bit of challenge uh no patience and steady hands but 
but you don't have to do this the whole way just like for the parts you want to really show the detail in all right let's define this tentacle and the little bubble thing into there And we don't want these rough edges, so with a wet brush, just blend that into the background. Here we go. So we basically just have to do that with the rest of the jellyfish, sorry. And sometimes I go crazy. Um, I put a bunch of details in parts of the background. Not all of them, but just like for example, instead of just painting through the whole way, I can make a shape like a flower, like seaweed coming from here. And if I just paint that pigment in colors, it's gonna look, make it look like there's a deeper level for the background. So it's an easy way to break up your background without actually having to add a lot, a ton of details to it. Just uh, the suggestion that there's something breaking up the form is enough to make the uh, eye think there's it's a busy photo. So I just do that for some other parts maybe I can pretend there's a, some seaweed growing out here uh, make sure you don't paint in your circles because we've kept track for so long it will be a shame to accidentally lose one of these bright light spots using darker pigments. Maybe just a little more detail here. Not much. You, don't, you really want to leave out a, a lot of white, not pure white, but light bits in watercolor. I think, in my opinion at least, the medium tends to lead, lend towards uh, white spaces better than actual color. What, what I mean by that is... I notice when people talk to me about my work, they notice the bits that I actually avoided painting in. That's the bits people look at the most. So it's in terms of like art, art terms, the negative spaces with watercolor is more interesting than the bits that are colored in. I think, at least my opinion. So my point is just keep those white spaces uh, clear you don't have to fill the whole uh, paper with pigment or details just a suggestion of detail here and there is enough to like fully make it look like a populated painting
cool. Same with the rest of them. Maybe make it. Oh, this is pretty interesting. You see how this and these lines actually kind of make it look like there's a circle or like a glowing object behind that. I didn't do that on purpose. That was not intentional. But now that I kind of see it, I want to reinforce that. So just trace this line out and then add some shadows there just to make that little circle a bit behind their pop. Same with the bottom bits. Just make suggestions that they're shapes there to break up the pa painting, the paint. Yeah, there you go. I like it. I like that. That that that's that's one of your little accidents that I like with watercolor. So just I mean just adding a bunch of random shapes just to make it look like there's something there. There's actually not nothing. <laughs> oh that's the story of my life. I don't want to add too much detail because that might take away the attention from the actual jellyfish that we're trying to do. Yeah, just put a bit of definition on the fish. Make the fins longer. And keep adding those bubble circle things I talk about. You can even add them on top of uh, light paint, not just on the white bits. Cool. Paint in the fins in there. This little fishy tail. Like I said in the other video, I really like painting in the edges because I like how the watercolor bunches up against the uh, masking tape and it's really fun to find out what it looks like when it's peeled off because if the paint didn't uh, seep in there, it's actually going to look uh, really clean around here, the edges, and I really like that. I, that's one of my favorite parts of painting taking the tape off. Or maybe that has something to do with the fact that I'm actually done with the paint, with the piece, and then I can move on. But yeah, it's cathartic to do it, regardless of that. So I'm just gonna reinforce some of the edges here. Maybe uh, suggest some rougher shapes. Just add a bit more depth and detail. Same one around here. Cool. I'm pretty happy with how the background's divided now. Like, you can see it's like 
there's distinct regions to it. It's not just one big blocky monolith background. So now what I want to do is after like breaking it up, I want to go in and just smooth out some of the rough edges that I think would look better if it's like blurry. I'm not trying to remove all of the paint details I did, but just trying to make some of it a bit washed out and blurry. Because too much detail would actually make it look, uh, I think, cluttered and dirty. Because the background's still the background. It can't be sharper than your object in the foreground. But that doesn't mean you can, you have to sacrifice detail for the background. So a uh, fine balance between uh, detail and fuzz. Just to soften up these pigment heavy areas. Make it look like I act, uh, there's a actual cut in the background. These bits. Yeah. And also here. Cool. I'll do one more pass with the background, but I think it's uh, like with the first video, the paper's been overworked. I don't want to oversaturate the paper because that'll. If you oversaturate the paper when it's too wet and you keep brushing on it, it'll actually peel off the top layer of the paper. You can kind of see it happening with like these little fibers that you find. I don't know if you can see it on camera. But that's actually part of the paper being ripped off because you're overworking your paper. So at this point, I have officially overworked it. <laughs> Because I think I'm not used to painting on smaller sheets, so I really need to stop, learn how to stop. Yeah, that's what that means I need to stop. Uh, maybe before I stop and let this dry, I can just start doing some detail with the jellyfish and the, and the tentacles. So I just I want to start off with the most prominent detail of the jelly, would, which would be its bell. So what I want to do is I just want to define the shape of the bell around here. And then get some water on your brush and then just pull down that paint with your watery brush. That'll make it look like there's a shadow there and the bills up actually rounded out over the tentacles and maybe you can just pull the shadow down more just to define tentacles and stuff there you go I think I think I'm gonna let it dry for now uh, I'll be back when it's dry to f maybe finish it off hopefully yeah I'll be back in maybe like an hour or two. See you guys.